sings out to you, my soul sings out to me, my soul sings out to the sunshine just beyond the mountains, to the harmonies that are in the room, to the sound, to the children, to the laughter, and so it is. We are an interfaith gathering, a spiritual community that honors all teachings and all spiritual teachers. And now we begin the ceremony that celebrates this oneness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths come for the one universal presence, which we call spirit. Our candle lighter this morning is. And so let us begin. The Tao honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. Shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of pristine spirituality. Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. Islam, honoring the path of submission to the will of God as the highest calling. New Thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. That is us. The last candle is a healing candle of love and of peace. We invite you in the stillness of your own mind to bring to awareness the names of anyone you wish to be included in this healing flame of love, peace, and light. Now that our flames of faith are fully lighted, we move forward into our celebration, realizing and reaffirming that all paths lead to God. Our sacred quote for today comes from our Science of Mind magazine from Friday, May 22nd, 2020. The only possible match for someone who does not know how to receive is someone who does not know how to give. What classifies someone as a challenged receiver? It depends on the investment to healing and freeing ourselves from lies of unworthiness. There's high probability we're unconsciously refusing a great deal of the bounty the universe is offering if we're still indoctrinated with a mindset that giving is better than receiving. If you recognize yourself as a challenged receiver, begin accepting invitations you want to decline. Start responding to any compliment with a simple thank you without depreciating qualifiers. And so it is. And so it is. We can do a little better than that. Uh, especially for a song that was written and directed by Aaron. Yay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> this is going to be a fun talk. <laughs> I was telling people who came in early that I was driving around the city of Anchorage between midnight and 1 o'clock looking for an open um, fast food restaurant. <laughs> there was none. <laughs> so that probably will show up somewhere in the talk. <laughs> um, why did the math book ask the calculator for help? He had too many problems. <laughs> okay, that wasn't as good as Reverend Don's, but thought I would try. Um, so. In a world where collaboration is key, is absolute key, 
There is one simple phrase that can unlock a world of possibilities. Ready? Just ask for something you need. Just ask for something you need, and the portal opens. Now, today's topic uh, came from Joan, so a little bit more on that in, in a moment. Um, so when we wholeheartedly say yes to something, um, we open those doors to opportunity. We foster a deep connection, and we experience growth. Reasons to not ask for help? Oh, that makes me vulnerable. Um, ah, I'm just going to be bothering others. Um, I'm self-sufficient. I can do it all. Anybody here? Okay, just me. Betty. <laughs> Judy in the back. Woohoo! Yeah. Um, social expectations, and then um, fear of judgment. So those are all the reasons why we think we can't ask for help. Now, let's think a minute about what kind of help is usually asked for. And I got four things for you. They ask for information. They ask for advice. Somebody might ask you um, for assistance with tasks. And then the last thing is they might need emotional support. So keeping all of that bucket uh, uh, in mind, please say yes to each other. Greet each other and say yes. And that goes for you at home also. Maybe turn to the cat, the dog. If you have a goldfish, that works. Uh, and if you have a human in the house, as they're wandering by, just yell, yes! And see what happens. Um, does anybody know somebody who's, har who's really bad at receiving? Is anybody? <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of, woohoo, yeah. We know people bad at receiving. Um, I'm willing to bet this person also has a problem giving. No? They're good at giving. They just can't receive. So uh, Karen talked about in her uh, opening uh, being a challenged receiver. Now when you're a challenged receiver, um, it really slams the door on having a balanced life. Um, Karen, you look beautiful today. Thank you so much, Linda. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. you're welcome. You're yeah. welcome. That's the sin. So Karen has been a practitioner for a million and a half years, so of course she's able to get to <laughs> accept that compliment. If I said that to everybody here, is there anybody here who would have a hard time accepting if I walked up and said, wow, you look amazing today. <laughs> okay, I've got, I've got some half people, like don't tell anybody, don't say my name, but ask me. Mm. It keeps you in the bucket of, I'm not worthy enough. Think about that. A simple compliment sends you into, oh, no, 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 no. If they knew the real me. And it blocks your good. It makes you feel and affirms that you're less than. Yeesh. That 
kind of doesn't feel good. It doesn't even sound good saying it. Um, and it also stops you from having, you know, what I said, a balanced life. Now, uh, I came across this. It was in the Science of Mind magazine. And it, it was somebody who said, often I have blocked my good without being aware I was doing it. Many times in the past, I refused compliments, gifts, and favors from well-meaning friends and relatives. I not only unwilling to receive, but I was blocking good from others by not allowing them the opportunity to give and feel good about it. When I became aware of how many times I said no thanks to others, I consciously decided to change my attitude. How good does it feel to give something and have it accepted with love. And even if it's a small thing, you made a difference. Does anybody like it? I'm like addicted to that feeling. I like, I love that, being able to do something for someone and them going, oh my God, that's just what I needed. It's like, yes, I walk around for the rest of this day. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gave today. You know, does anybody else feel that way about giving? It's like a total jolt. It's like a yes. It's like I'm here for a reason and I want to live. And then you get somebody who says no. And you're like, oh, okay. Sorry for bothering you. <laughs> right? Right? So I have a native. Um, an ancient Native American story I want to share with you. It's about this raging forest fire. Now the animals, including a powerful jaguar, fled for their lives. And of course, as the jaguar runs to safety, he notices this tiny little hummingbird zooming past him and heading into the fire. Now, a few moments later, the jaguar sees the humane bird race past him again towards the water. Now he sees the hummingbird comes back. He sees him go back. So after several times of seeing this hummingbird go back and forth, the jaguar said, hummingbird, why are you headed into the fire when everyone else is running for their lives? The hummingbird replied, I'm going to the lake where I can fill my beak with as much water as I can hold, and then I go back to the fire and empty my beak onto the fire. <laughs> the jaguar scoffed. That won't do any good. The small uh, amount of water that your beak will hold will not make a difference in this fire. You're right, answered the hummingbird. But the forest is my home, and it's provided so much throughout my life for me and my family. Even though I know I can't put this fire out, I have to do my part to save the forest. The forest gods, hearing the hummingbird's commitment, were moved and they created a rainstorm which extinguished the fire. The Native American elders tell this story to their grandchildren saying, if you want miracles in your life, you have to do the part. You have to do your part. And so when this asking and receiving it seems like it's a little piece of a puzzle, but it's so much larger, isn't it? And you never know when somebody asks you to do X, and it's just like, oh, okay, how you might be affecting their life. Or bigger than that, how you're challenging your own life.
So let's think about this. Giving and receiving. So in thinking about this, I thought about my week. Be a little bit longer. Uh, Claire? So I want to demonstrate my week. OK, of course, I'm in the middle. <laughs> so it's going to start with me asking Joan for breakfast. Then I'm with Joan at breakfast, and uh, she had an amazing week. And I said, well, what happened that made your week so amazing? And she said, it's because I asked for help. And she got a bunch of stuff done. And so then, oh boy, my, my friend Connie, my neighbor. So they decided to re-renovate the bathroom while the kids were on vacation. But we're talking about uh, her husband is in his 80s and is a, a Vietnam vet. Um, and so he, he's an amazing in uh, construction. But he's just a little older and not able to do as much. Um, and so I called Bob to say, can you help? <laughs> and he said, sure. <laughs> and so what that ended up being was Bob ended up going over to their house and snow blowing their driveway. Bob has met Willis once. He went over, oh my God, they were so grateful. Connie called me and said, can you go grocery shopping for me because we're so busy with this renovation, we don't have food in the house. So, of course I did that. And, you know, maybe an image, uh, pizza showed up and Willis's favorite and Claire showed up. And then she called me to let me know that she had made spaghetti. So I had spaghetti for dinner and she gave to me. And then, um, let's see, what else? So, my friend Leslie, had um, had some unexpected grief this week. And so she called me to see if I could take her dog, Maggie. Well, I said yes, but in order for me to say yes, I had to call Bob the dog who was supposed to be at my house and ask if he would mind doing day hab at his house. So he said, sure. So I got to say yes. So I got to walk two dogs every day this week separately. How much fun is that? Then I got a phone call from Betty. Betty called me. Betty wanted help moving. So I'm like, yes. But as soon as she went, she actually asked me and Bob. But um, as soon as uh, I hung up, I went, I heard the word moving. So what do I do? I called Susan and I called Joan and they came to help move. So there were four of us that showed up at Betty's house to help move. Well, um, I also, Connie, remember? They're all, so they've got the, uh, Judith Mack makes this special cream. And so Connie called me to see if I had any of that cream, and I did, and I gave it to her, but it was our last. And so I called Judith Mack, who makes the cream, to say, hey, you got any more? She said, no. But like three days later, she called and said, I made a batch. And so I got to go pick up the cream. While well, I'm at Judith Mack's house, she asked me, do you know anybody? Who could house sit for a month? I said, hey, why don't you ask Susan? <laughs> and Susan said, yes. So Susan calls me and asks me to go to dinner. So I went to dinner with Susan. Like I got to, and, and when dinner was over and the guy walks up and he's got the check, I swear to God she had that credit card out <laughs> and she handed it to the waiter before I even knew what was going on. And I'm like, Susan, but I gotta pay. And she's like, she's like, no, dinner's on me. I'm like, why? Because you're so nice, uh, right? So I'm like, thank you, Susan. So that's kind of cool. And also, Betty took me out to dinner <laughs> last week, so I get asked a lot. Um, I had to call Bob because my car wouldn't start, and so Bob gave me a ride to Betty's house <laughs> to do that. And then Susan gave me a ride. I had to ask Susan for a ride home. She gave it to me. Tanya is a work companion, and she asked me to bring lunch for work. Of course, I said yes. And then I asked Claire and Wayne to dinner Aww. to celebrate uh, Hanukkah. <laughs> just, just a tad bit off. Um, but they said yes. Are you getting it? Does this, are you getting it? I say yes, I get free dinner. 
I say yes, I get to go to breakfast. I say yes, I get a free dinner. Yes, Betty. And most of all, Bob the dog. He's my happy space, and I was so glad he was willing to help out. Thank you. So, do you get it? How many things did I ask for versus how much did I receive? And oh my God, I had the best week. Moving, Betty, I'm glad you moved. <laughs> And so, metaphysically, um, when we ask, we're aligning ourselves with the universe. The universe is tuned in to our desires and our energy. Um, and it's recognizing the interconnectedness of it all. Um, and when you give, and maybe when you receive, you are part of a much larger energetic flow. Asking for something is actually a conscious connection with the universe. You are one with the universe. One. Now, asking also becomes a way of learning how to focus yourself, how to focus your energy how to clarify your desires and open up the door to more possibilities than you could ever imagine. I'm not talking about you have to help Betty move. You can open the door for someone. You can find a piece of mail on the ground in your neighborhood and put it back in the mailbox. Maybe walk a dog for somebody who's sick. It doesn't have to be gigantic, it can be little. Pick up your neighbor's mail when they're gone. Ask, receive, be blessed and say thank you. And so with that in mind, I'm going to invite you to join me. This has been a week. I don't know what you guys have been doing, but <clears throat> I had three humans actually die this week. Now, they weren't my humans. They were friends or mothers of my humans. Um, the first, uh, is my friend Leslie. Her mom, I think 101, and was hanging on for dear life. <laughs> we love her. The other, you all know Allison. Her brother-in-law, Heinz, passed away. And again, he was, he had Alzheimer's and he was older. But she loved Heinz. Not only does she love her sister, but she loved Heinz. He actually grew up um, and was uh, rescued, had to escape, um, what did she say? Switzerland? Somewhere during World War II. Made it to the United States. And then the last person, and some of you might know this, this gentleman. His name is Jean Moe. Uh, and he is my um, boss's father-in-law. And I guess he's somewhat famous around here in Anchorage. And he passed away. And so, Karen, I wish that I had enough to give to everyone. But I just, in this moment with you, I want to ask, 
that we remember Heinz, Patricia, and Jean. We send out our love surrounding the families, my friends. Is there anyone else in the room who may have lost a human this week? Okay. Not this week, but my aunt passed away December 31st from, from also Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And I hold my cousins in that space because they lost their father in May. Mm -hmm. So same year. When I think about our elders, it reminds me that in every moment, someone is taking their last breath. It helps me put life into perspective. I don't want to spend another minute being anything other than kind. I want to look for years to be helpful, to make others feel better for having been in my presence. And I choose to stand as a place for love. So here's to them. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you for helping me honor them. It's so hard, isn't it? When your friends start to lose people and you just feel a little helpless. Thank so thank you for joining me. And in conclusion, This is such a melting pot of kindness. This room is a family. And I would dare say there's not a person here who would say no if you asked them something. Right? OK. So take a class, any class. Become deeper embedded into this community. Surround yourself with people who say yes. So thank you, namaste. And so as we go through this thing called life, we just simply recognize that there is an infinite creative force in, around, and through, and most importantly, as each and every one of us now and forever. And as we go through life, we open ourselves up not only to ask, but to say yes, to say yes to the presence of that infinite force that is working with us. And so we can say yes to financial abundance. We can say yes to health. We can say yes to our connection to one another and to God. And it is with that affirmative approach to this thing we call life that we can be a bigger, better, more affluent expression of the infinite. We give thanks for our awareness. We give thanks for our ability to say yes. We give thanks for our ability to receive and to give. And so we just simply let this go because we know that it's possible.